Hello everyone, Leif Reed here, and we have the infamous 1984 by George Orwell. Now this has become perhaps the most referenced book as of late, and it's kind of a funny uh, idea or observation to note how many people have actually read this book. And I do commiserate with them to some degree because this is not the most engaging story. The thoughts and ideas and concepts here are very interesting and very uh, modern and dystopian and all that stuff. But to actually read it, it's, it's rather dry. Uh, compared to something like Brave New World, which I love because it's an arc and character development and it grabs your attention, this one is kind of a slog. Um, and the big difference between this one and Brave New World, and I can't remember what I said in that review, but in Brave New World, it's about biological and um, neurochemical control of society via drugs and breeding and conditioning. While 1984, they don't have that kind of technology. Instead, it's very much um, focused on... Uh, language, wording, and little thought games that the uh, government um, can use and utilize in order to um, propagandize or fool people. Uh, the most um, blatant example, first off, is uh, the, there's the Department of Truth, which runs Propaganda and Lies. Uh, there's the Department of Peace, which is the War Department. And um, very similar, a very similar commonality in real life is that before the Second World War, the Department of Defense in America was referred to as the Department of War. And so they had to change it to sound nicer and fluffier and kind of say the opposite. And the, and the running theme and slogan um, through uh, the novel and of the government, uh, INGSOC, which I forget exactly what that stands for, like ING socialism or something, is um, uh, unity, was it peace through unity or ignorance through strength? I actually, hold on, sorry, I actually forget what the slogan actually was. Another concept that I personally love that I haven't heard a lot brought up in this book or from this book rather, is the molding or dumbing down of language to very defined silos. For example, there's um, a conversation between two characters and one says, oh yes, I went out for the weekend, it was magnificent. And the guy turns to him and says, oh no, no, you can't say that anymore. Magnificent, you mean double plus good. And it's a way that they're controlling language to be more and more regulated and regimented so that you can't express exactly what you mean. And it's an observation that has been noted in different cultures that there are certain words in different cultures that we end up borrowing because we don't actually have a word to express that in, in, in English or in French or whatever. In fact, a lot of English loan words a lot of them, I'm not sure if most of them, probably come from French, like rendezvous and, um, I don't know, rouge or something, I don't know. Um, lots, lots of, uh, actually, uh, lots of military and uh, culinary stuff. I think lieutenant or lieutenant is, is French, I think. Um, anyway, um, so it's kind of like we have our concepts and we're struggling to get words to express exactly what we mean. And in this universe, the expression of language is very regimented and very much controlled. And it's done that through social enforcement. Um, very quickly on the title, 1984, I believe when Orwell wrote this, um, his idea was that this kind of system would take place in uh, England or the UK by the year 1984. That was like the year where he saw this occurring and that would be the end of normal society and this society would uh, occur and exist. 
And it was kind of like his prophecy. Um, very funny to, to mention, to bring up. Um, <clears throat> if you want to get the idea of 1984 without actually <clears throat> reading it, there are movies based off it. And while there are movies based off 1984, uh, I'm not sure if everyone knows this, but there's a movie that is the best rendition of this book, which is called Brazil. And Brazil was scheduled to uh, release in 1984, but I think because of budget, they had to delay it to 1985. But anyway, um, it's something I didn't realize, but the movie Brazil is 1984. They're the same, they're the same book. Um, so a bit more on exactly who is the uh, main character of this book. So we, we do have a character, his name is Maslow, uh, I believe. And so he kind of lives his life, his dismal existence. Uh, I think it, um, it starts and opens up talking about how there are TV screens everywhere and um, you know everything's monitored. And that's very true of the UK. They do have tons of CCTV. It's a very weird like prison island in a weird way, what they wanted Australia to be, but they're free. Anyway, so Maslow, his uh, job or his work is that he is a, I forget the exact term, but an editor essentially. And so um, his work will be to take old documents, newspaper clippings, movies, film, cinema, um, or whatnot, and edit them so that it fits the current narrative, which I think is the most egregious, horrifying idea out there. And I don't think uh, George Orwell could imagine the internet, but I think it's a good um, relation that if I on the internet wanted to go to a Wikipedia article and say, oh yes, this is the truth, then you know that's kind of like the public facing image and someone can go on there and change it. And the way it works in the um, book is that everything is um, sent through pneumatic tubes and it has little dials or things that they're able to edit the words on the newspaper. So for example, one thing that they would do is that um, their government has always been at war with Eurasia. Eurasia is this big evil thing and um, basically they would he would go into the previous documents and alter the wording so that oh you know uh, germany declares war on the uk or vice versa and say the uk is uh, has been you know eurasia has declared war on the on the uk and they've always been at war for 50 years for 100 years and we even have the old newspaper clippings to support this even though they've all been altered and he, he, that's his job at the Ministry of Truth. And uh, something else they do that's very interesting, that's possibly relatable to, to today, is they have the five minutes of hate. And this is a scene wherein they, um, they have their morning announcements, I think they have their morning exercises or whatever, and then they say, oh, and now we're going to show the face of the Eurasian Prime Minister and we're all gonna boo and throw like tomatoes at the screen and you get to be angry for five minutes. And so it's a way for the citizens to lash out all their anger at this probably fictional face, this character. And, and it's a way for them to express their frustrations with everything else and blame it on this r random far off enemy that probably doesn't even exist. And it's alluded to many times in the book that this war isn't even real, that they're just sending resources to some faraway place they don't even know about. And it's all being done to keep everyone controlled at home, that there is no actual war. I'm not sure if it goes that far, but um, we never, I don't think we actually ever find out what the war situation is. But anyway, there's all these mechanisms of linguistic control and social programs to fashion society into a very controlled dystopian state where there's no love, art, science, whatever. And of course, Maslow falls in love with a woman and that complicates everything. It always, it always starts with a woman and the adventure begins. Who taught you that, he said. My grandfather. He used to say it to me when I was a little girl. He was vaporized when I was eight. At any rate, he disappeared. I wondered what a lemon was, she added inconsequentially. 
I've seen oranges. They're kind of round yellow fruit with a thick skin. I can't remember lemons, said Winston. Sorry, his name is Winston. They were quite common in the 50s. They were so sour that it set your teeth on edge, even to smell them. I bet that picture's got bugs behind it, said Julia. Anyway, so it gives us an insight that, you know, uh, basic resources are scarce. Uh, the idea of what a lemon is is kind of foreign. Um, the uh, the disappearance is um, uh, something very much, I believe, taken right out of the uh, communist textbook of the USSR, where people were just abducted in the night. They were just taken and seized. And, um, and uh, there's a lot of very um, interesting themes and... and uh, uh, concepts in here that you can also see in V for Vendetta, another great movie that I think not totally just adapted from this, but definitely borrowed from this very heavily. It, amazing movie. Oh yeah, this is where the concept of the thought police come from. Here's a good line. Don't you see that the whole aim of new speak is to narrow the range of thought in the end, we shall make thought crime literally impossible because there will be no words in which to express it. Every concept that can ever be needed will be expressed by exactly one word, with its meaning rigidly defined and all its subsidiary meanings rubbed out and forgotten. Already in the 11th edition, we're not far from that point, but the process will still be continuing long after you and I are dead. Every year, fewer and fewer words, and the range of consciousness always a little smaller. Even now, of course, there's no reason or excuse for committing thought crime. It's merely a question of self-discipline, reality control. But in the end, there won't be any need for even for that. The revolution will be complete when the language is perfect. Newspeak is Ingsoc, and Ingsoc is Newspeak, he added with a sort of mystical satisfaction. Has it ever occurred to you, Winston, that by the year 2050, at the very latest, not a single human being will be alive who could understand such a conversation as we are having now? So, I think that's a perfect summary of, of the entire book right there. And newspeak is just the term that they refer to as the new English language, that the dictionaries and everything are referring everything down to trying to do it to a single word so that the range of thought is not possible. But anyway, I, I think that pretty much is hits home. Um, it, again, it's, uh, you know, you can see the text here and it's, you know, decently spaced out. It's also a decently long book ish around 300 pages. So it's not short and it's not super long, but it does, it is rather depressing and kind of dry, and it's not the greatest thing ever. It's a very an intellectual, uh, intellectually heavy book, so it's not like interesting or super engaging, and it's a bit of a slog for 300 pages. So it feels longer than it should be. Um, the ending is kind of interesting because you know he gets caught, and what they end up doing is is really interesting because they don't just like want to execute him. Uh, they also, the way they get to him is they know his personal fear of rats, I believe, and they use that against him. And, but the ending is, is such that they just don't want to execute him. They actually want to convince him that he is wrong. They literally force him to go through a brainwashing program to convince him that he is in the wrong and that Ingsoc and the government are perfect and have always been at war with Eurasia. They want to convince him of the own lies that he's been creating. Because in their mind, the revolution will not be complete until it's not just every, every person believes it, but every thought is also in congruence as if people were robots uh, along with the state. And um, that's kind of where the book ends, with, with Winston cheering to the continuing war uh, to just be a normal guy in that society. There's another uh, concept here is that the way they get to him is through Room 101, which has 
the thing that is in room 101 is the worst thing in the world. And it's different for every person because they've tabulated their fears. Oh yes, and of course I forgot, this is also where the concept of Big Brother comes from. And Big Brother is this um, fictional character, almost like an Uncle Sam kind of character, who is always watching you. It's the idea with the CCTVs and the videos in every apartment or every seat corner, your behavior is being monitored, watched, and tabulated. I can definitely think of places like China that literally do that. Um, and perhaps, you know, here, you know, in, in, in the Western world. But uh, yeah, no, it's, it's scary, it's terrifying, and we were given this warning uh, a long time ago for people to stand up and say, hey, uh, when this stuff does come around, and they word it differently, you have a right and obligation to stand up and say, no, we're not going to be doing this. This is not what we want. But yeah, this is the book that everyone says, oh, it's so like 1984, man. It's, it's just like that. Well, now you can actually read it and find out exactly what they mean by that. And it really refers mostly to linguistics rather than technological or biological altering. Um, Honestly, if you want my personal opinion, our current situation is a potential uh, mix of Brave New World 1984 and probably some other sort of cyberpunk dystopian novel or universe. But uh, yeah, I'd recommend it. Even though it's a bit of a slog, it is interesting. It is a badge of, I guess, intellectual honor to say, yeah, I actually did read this. I know exactly what it says. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Not much else to say. I recommend it, sadly, that uh, it might be required reading for uh, today's world, but that's where it is. The more you know, the better off you'll be. Anyway, guys, uh, I think that's it, and I'll see you guys later, and as always, keep reading.